Hey guys, my name is Holly Baxter. I'm an accredited practicing dietitian and online physique coach. And today I'm going to be talking to you about how to accurately track your macronutrient targets when it comes to labeling of calories and uh, dietary fiber especially. So um, I have recorded two videos prior to this one, part one and part two. They look at dietary fiber, what it is, um, what are the health benefits of dietary fiber and where you can find the sources of fiber, so that's part one. I then look at part two, which is dietary fiber and how it is labeled or what are the labeling requirements for something to be considered a dietary fiber. Um, and then obviously this video is going to go into depth about how calories are actually calculated, how they are portrayed on the nutrition information panel and how you can accurately track um, your macronutrients um, within respect of calories. So um, do uh, go back and have a look at those other videos if that is something that is of interest to you. So um, moving on, I am frequently asked about um, how to track your macros when it comes to um, dietary fiber, net carbs, or how come when I'm logging foods, I'm entering in what the packet says, it tells me I'm eating you know, uh, 85 calories, I log its you know, correct fat amount, I log the carbohydrate amount, and I log the protein amount. But then at the end of the day, um, my calorie target doesn't match the numbers that I've entered in, even though they're meant to be accurate. How can this be? So um, let's have a look at some of the ways that, or the way that calories are actually calculated, uh, particularly here in the US of A. So firstly, uh, calories are listed at the very top of the nutrition panel, um, right next to the serving size. And actually, with the updated nutrition labeling laws almost in effect, um, these will be much larger and far more easily identifiable. Um, I can't remember the number of times I recall that I've gone and eaten a packaged protein bar or some other exciting new product, only to realize that after eating the whole thing, there was actually 2.5 servings in that particular packet. So I've effectively taken in double the amount of calories I thought I was consuming. Macro remorse, I know, and I'm sure many of you have done this as well. Um, and that's just because the serving size is listed, it's very small, or you assume that the amount of um, calories is listed on the packet as what it is, um, but they're a little cheeky and it's actually more. And so um, the new laws will actually, um, or have actually revised this. So the, uh, not only will the caloric um, intakes be much higher and more visible, but so too will the serving sizes. Um, so let's now have a look specifically at um, calories and how they are actually um, equated on the back of a on the back of a packet and it all comes down to rounding so in the usa uh, and i believe this is the same case for australia and some uh, european countries uh, calories are, are actually expressed to the nearest five calorie increment um, for products that contain and include 50 calories so if your serving of maybe it is a packet of chips for example only had 50 calories or 49 calories well then they can express that amount to the nearest five calorie increment so they could round down or they could round up we then look at the next category for calories which would be foods that contain 50 calories and above so for these foods um, calories are expressed to the nearest calorie increment so again they could round so even if their product had 55 um, 55 calories they could actually list 50 or similarly said if they if their product contained um, I don't know 200 uh, calories they could actually list 191 or they could list 210 um, so there is a bigger window or margin of error uh, when it comes to these um, how foods are actually labeled so um, The other group or category would be those that contain less than five calories. So this is our diet products essentially um, They can actually be expressed as zero. So even if something does say zero calories um, the food man manufacturer even if they have done testing and their food product contains four calories, which is still energy um, and you're maybe you're eating 20 of that product a day like chewing gum for example um, if you had 20 pieces of chewing gum and each of those had four calories 
they're listing it as zero, you're still getting a, a, a little bit of energy from that. So that is something to consider. Let's talk about some other facts about calories. Calories are determined by calculating the total fat, the total protein, the total carbohydrate, minus the amount of total non-digestible carbohydrates. This is also known as dietary fiber, people. <laughs> so um, if we look at a label and it contains, uh, it might say calories are 70, uh, 70 calories per serving, yet you could go and add up the total fat you could go and add up the total protein, you could go and add up the total carbohydrate. If you added those three things up um, versus their energy values, those things wouldn't align. And that is because they are subtracting the amount of non-digestible carbohydrates, dietary fiber, and to top that off, if there is any sugar alcohols um, or sugar sweetener products in that food, they can subtract those as well. But these aren't calorie free. We discussed that in the previous video, and I'm about to talk to you about sugar alcohols now uh, and what the caloric value of these are. Because for fitness people, and those of us that are probably most consumed um, with knowing about what is actually in foods, we're the ones that are consuming these products with all the sugar alcohols and dietary fiber, because they're low calorie and we're on the hunt for these, right? Um, so what is the caloric value given to dietary fiber? Um, and I did mention this in my earlier video, but 2 to 2.5 is generally the given amount of calories per gram um, for non-digestible carbohydrates or dietary fiber. The amount of calorie uh, or the caloric value given to sugar alcohols um, varies and it depends which sugar alcohol is actually used in the food. So you do need to be able to go and look at the um, food list or the food ingredients list to determine this. Um, now on my website, I'm going to give you um, a list of examples of different sugar alcohols and what their caloric value is so that you can actually go and work out what is in the food that you're eating because pretty sure the caloric content is going to be inaccurate um, when you are trying to track this. And that's where um, you're gonna end up having some discrepancies with how many carbohydrates you've consumed versus your actual calories for the day, if that makes sense. So. Um, some examples of these sugar alcohols would be uh, exalitol, maltitol, sorbitol, mannitol, um, erythritol, isomol. There's a whole whopping list of them, um, but they're just some examples. Um, and they, some, they usually contain anywhere from, say, two to three calories per gram used in the product. And typically for like a protein bar, for example, you might have five grams of mannitol and you might have three grams of sorbitol. So um, it's not contributed to the calorie value. In fact, food manufacturers are adding these because they can subtract them from the total calorie amount. And then um, when they're you know trying to promote their food, they can say, hey, this has got net two grams of carbohydrate. And everyone's like, oh, beauty. I can eat about 20 of these and it's not gonna affect my carbohydrate intake. Well, sadly it will. Um, but hopefully you feel that you are more informed after having uh, listened to this. Now, just quickly, I'm going to talk about net carbs. So I thought I would make mention that um, in my previous video and article, um, I'm frequently asked about net carbohydrates and how they should be tracked. Um, and this is best explained by way of an example. So um, if you look at a, a nutrition information panel of your favorite ice cream. And this is good because I know the macros off this off the top of my head. So in a 66 gram serve of ice cream, I won't make, uh, make, make mention of names or brands, but in this particular ice cream product that I do dearly love, uh, there is 60 calories. Okay, so it says 60. Um, when you look at the fats, it says two grams of fat. And then you look at the protein, it says five grams of protein and the carbohydrates are 14 grams. If you add those up, so if I go uh, two grams of fat times seven calories, because we know that um, one gram of fat equals uh, seven calories. So two times seven, that is 14 calories. And then we look at the protein. So we go five times four, because obviously protein is four calories per gram. So that's 20. And if we look at the carbohydrate intake from carbohydrates, sorry, the caloric intake from carbohydrates, so we'd say 14 
times 4, uh, that is 56. Where is this 60 calories coming from? Does it make sense? We added that, that equals 90. Um, but what we need to consider is that the food manufacturer here, they haven't done anything wrong. They're just going by what the FDA say they can do. And that is um, subtract the calories from fiber and sugar alcohols. So if we look at the fiber uh, content of this particular product, there are three grams of fiber. And then if you look down the list of the ingredients panel, oh, there's a sugar alcohol. Uh, there might be five grams of this particular sugar alcohol. Um, if we add up that five grams and say it has a value of three um, calories per gram, and we use a value of 2.5 or three for that fiber, um, that equals 22.5. <laughs> there is 22.5 calories. And they have subtracted that amount from the initial 90, and that's where they're coming up with their final calories, okay? And even this particular product it still didn't make sense that I was reading it, uh, looking at the label for. I think it came back at like 67.5, even after I had subtracted what I thought was it a reasonable amount to use for the sugar alcohol and the amount for a fiber. So uh, unless they have got some other kind of product like glycerol um, that's not listed specifically, um, which has a higher caloric value than something like carbohydrate, um, I wasn't sure how they even came up with that number. So that was interesting. Um, but that is generally how are these companies and food manufacturers um, are able to list the, the net carb amount um, and say that the product is very low carb, but it is not calorie free. So hopefully um, that gives you some insight um, into how you need to actually calculate your, your targets if you are somebody that flexible diets and tracks your macros. Just quickly, um, I wanted to talk about some of the other uh, changes that are being made to the nutrition labels in the new uh, updated labeling laws, and that is uh, that vitamin D and potassium, um, these are also um, nutrients that uh, a lot of Americans don't always consume sufficient amounts of, um, and they are associated with uh, an increased risk of different uh, chronic diseases. Vitamin D is obviously important for its role in bone health, as we know, um, and potassium helps to lower blood sugar, uh, blood pressure. Um, for these reasons, um, they are being added to the um, to the new labeling, uh, to the labels on food products. Um, and for the same reason, iron and calcium are going to remain on the labeling list because they are important for our overall health. Um, vitamin A and vitamin C um, are no longer going to be required or listed on products. Food manufacturers can still choose to provide that information, but it's no longer mandatory. Um, and that was based back from um, early information in the 90s that said that the American diet was lacking in both vitamin A and vitamin C. But uh, for the majority now, um, these deficiencies are, are fairly rare. Um, so it's not necessarily um, required on our labels. So previously the amounts were listed on packaging that the FDA thought were appropriate amounts of um, that particular food product to be consumed. Um, now the um, recent um, request is that they show or reflect um, the actual amount of um, this particular food being consumed. Uh, so the serving sizes will actually be getting bigger um, and in some cases smaller. Um, this is because the FDA are now ensuring that the serving sizes listed on the packaging um, are based on the amounts of food and drinks that people are actually consuming rather than how much they should consume. Um, recent food consumption, uh, food consumption data actually show that some of the average sizes needed to be revised. So for example, um, the amount used for a serving of ice cream was previously uh, half a cup. Yeah, I don't need half a cup. <laughs> I even need more of like, more like a cup or the whole pint. Um, and for that reason, it's now changing to a one cup serving size on the label. Um, the reference amount used um, to set the serving size for soft drink uh, previously was eight ounces, uh, but that's now changing to 12 ounces. So uh, the reference amount for yogurt, another one, um, is decreasing from eight ounces down to six sizes because it's more um, realistic of the amounts that we're actually consuming. So uh, that's all I have to say about how to read the nutrition labels. And I do certainly hope that that 
uh, information about dietary fiber and sugar alcohols is able to help um, give you more clarity when you are tracking your macronutrients. Um, if you're somebody that hasn't tracked macronutrients and you would like to learn um, and obviously be a flexible dieter as I am, there is not really any food product that I do not eat. Uh, I like to think I maintain an okay shape throughout, throughout the year. I have a couple of world title fitness, um, world championship fitness model titles, so it doesn't, uh, hasn't done me too badly. Um, so you can contact me. My email address is uh, hbnutritionandtraining at gmail.com and I'm also going to list my website here for you now. It is www.hbnutrition.com.au and that is where you can find um, all the list of those dietary fibers that I mentioned in my previous videos um, and there are three articles um, that basically reflect what I have just spoken about in this three-part uh, video series on dietary fiber amongst other articles uh, that are relevant for nutrition um, as well so things like uh, ketogenic diets uh, flexible dieting um, metabolic damage or uh, metabolic adaptation there's lots of uh, hopefully useful information on there for you um, as well um, I do have a brand new ebook um, if you are interested in learning how to cook low calorie. Um, so that is available on my website as well, as are plenty of nutrition coaching packages and online semi-custom meal plans. So do check that out also. If you found today's video really useful, um, please uh, subscribe to my channel, share this information with your friends um, and like this uh, particular video if you found it useful. Um, and I hope you have a fantastic day and more success or better success with uh, flexible dieting uh, now that you have this info. Thanks for watching guys.